ये क्या हो गया नहीं हो रही वो बीच में रिकॉर्डिंग इन प्रोग्रेस आ गया What is ICP? It is a reversible and multifactorial condition of pregnancy characterized by mainly two features: pruritus, but in the absence of any skin rash or any skin lesions, um, and raised maternal bile acids, bile acid concentrations. And slide change, we slide change. Slide change, we slide change. Slide change, we slide change. प्रोराइटिस and the raised maternal bile acid concentrations are the two main features and both of which resolve after pregnancy after delivery uh, but in uh, this case other uh, causes of uh, itching and liver diseases in pregnancy should be ruled out what are the characteristic features of the disease uh, as i've already told itching is the main feature oh. it's, it's generalized itching is the main feature of the disease and uh, it usually starts from soles and palms and the itching increases at night and uh, but there are no skin lesions except for the excoriations um, and the caused by the scratching of the skin uh, the symptoms usually start in the late trimester uh, third trimester of pregnancy and uh, as i've already told uh, that jaundice is not not the main feature it is less common and uh, in, mostly in, in 17 to 75% of the cases uh, as the bilirubin it rarely exceeds 5 mg per deciliter vitamin k deficiency and steatorrhea can also occur as uh, there is fat, fat malabsorption because of the decreased bile acid, uh, decreased bile uh, what the differential diagnosis all uh, the causes of itching and uh, the liver diseases uh, in uh, that that can be caused in pregnancy should be ruled out uh, dermatitis preeclampsia viral hepatitis cholelithiasis and acute fatty liver of pregnancy are among the common ones pathogenesis uh, the exact cause the exact etiology of uh, icp is not yet known but uh, these three things are uh, thought to be pathogenesis of icp uh, among them the genetic susceptibility is very important can you have 839 ho raha hai 840 ho raha hai mama mai baat suno इसको फिर नौ बजे भेज देना ठीक है रिप्रोडक्टिव हार्मोन्स दैट इंक्लूड प्रोजेस्टेरोन एंड ईस्ट्रोजन बी आर ऑल कैन आल्सो बी हेल्ड रिस्पांसिबल एंड एनवायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स एज देयर आर सर्टेन ज्योग्राफिकल एरियाज व्हेयर देयर इज इंक्रीज्ड इंसिडेंस ऑफ आईसीपी एंड आल्सो इन विंटर्स इट इज इट इज सीन दैट द सिम्टम्स दे इंक्रीज इन विंटर्स ईस्ट्रोजन इज द मेन हार्मोन अम but uh, it as it raises in pregnancy and that uh, and increases in the third trimester later in pregnancy it is thought that it is occurred the uh, symptoms they occur in the third trimester but not in all pregnancies estrogen is rising in every pregnancy but uh, uh, the genetic predisposition is uh, something which makes um, certain people more uh, prone to icp estrogen is thought to inhibit the export pump that moves the bile acids from the hepatocyte to the bile canal which leads to the bile ductules and eventually the common hepatic duct in the absence of uh, this uh, mechanism occurring the bile acids they seep into the blood and uh, the raise in bile acid concentration in the blood uh, can cause uh, the symptoms especially the itching uh, the accumulation of bile acids under the skin can also cause you know, can cause uh, itching which is uh, very extreme in um, Uh, women with icp the increase in estrogen uh, in late pregnancy and uh, later in pregnancy uh, as the pregnancy advances can be related to the late presentation as i have already told the um, the estrogen is increased in twin gestation that also uh, suggests that the, there is increase more the increase in symptoms in twin gestation and people taking ocps can also develop intrahepatic cholestasis 
uh, as there are estrogen, um, estrogen, um, and or combined OCP pills. There is estrogen. Genetics. Uh, there is mutation in ABCB gene that encodes the protein MD3 protein, the main bile transport protein, uh, and this is associated with the progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis, and uh, thus uh, the genetic uh, component is explained. Uh, genetic mutation increases the sensitivity to estrogens, so um, the estrogen is also playing a part as I've already told. Environment. Uh, the extremes of weather uh, can also increase the symptoms. Increased uh, symptoms in winters are uh, shown in many patients. And uh, the sel selenium deficiency can also be co uh, causing the, the symptoms because uh, selenium is, uh, acts as a cofactor in several enzymes in the oxidative metabolism in liver. Incidence. The prevalence is influenced by the genetic and environmental aspects. As I've also been told, in UK, ICP affects 0.7% of the pregnancies, and in multi ethnic um, populations, it is 1.2 uh, to 5% in women in Indian, Asian, or Pakistani Asian origin. How is the diagnosis made? The appropriate history is very important in this case. Uh, there are certain questions that uh, should be asked from the women whether uh, the, the, they have already had the, these symptoms in the previous pregnancies, whether any other family member is having the certain symptoms, or uh, and it, uh, a pattern of itching, um, is it generalized or not, and uh, whether the itching increases uh, at night or not, and uh, the physical examination, and if uh, the, uh, the uh, patient has already uh, used uh, OCPs, did she have certain yes. symptoms when she was on OCPs? These are the right. questions that should be asked from the women. Um, on the physical examination, uh, we should be uh, observing uh, her, the women for any form of uh, jaundice, which is rare, but they might, it might be present. And also the skin, we should uh, carefully look for any skin lesions to rule out any other skin diseases. Lab findings are also important and exclusion of any other diseases uh, of causing uh, causes of itching or um, liver diseases in pregnancy is also very important. Okay, the lab investigations include bile acids, which is the most specific and sensitive test. The normal bile acid levels are zero to six in fasting during fasting. The, the fasting bile acid levels, but the levels may um uh, the, the levels up to eleven micromoles per liter are considered to be normal in late gestation, um and uh, but the this is also fasting levels. But um uh, usually we do not state the fasting levels in pregnancy for the convenience of the patient, and then even up to nineteen um micromoles per liter is also considered normal. AST and ALT levels, transmineases levels, uh, AST, can, AST can raise up to 10 to 25% more than normal levels, and ALT can also rise up to four times, and uh, it is also produced by the placenta. So it, um, ALT increases in normal pregnancies as well. It is not very specific. Bilirubin levels, they also, uh, they might rise, but they rarely exceed five milligrams per deciliter. GGT can be elevated slightly, but uh, in rare cases, and if, the, if it is so, then it uh, indicates the genetic uh, involvement in such patients. Lab investigations also include the folic acid, you know, deoxycholic acid, and coagulation profile is usually um, offered to the patient if there is severity of the symptoms and in complicated cases mo most of the time. Interpretation. When uh, clinically indicated bile acid measurements should be taken uh, at a convenient time, as I've already told, not performed uh, during fasting. Um, and as the perennial levels uh, readings are higher than fasting, so by taking a non-fasting upper limit to, uh, of normal up to 19 micromoles for bile acid, the persistent itch uh, with no skin lesions can be labeled as gestational pruritus if it is below 19. Women can go up on to develop ICP up to 15 weeks after the diagnosis of gestation with gestational pruritus. If the itching continues for these women, they should be offered to review um, um, with the repeat, repeated liver function tests and bioelastic measurements as clinically indicated. There are many cases of transient liver function test abnormalities such as drug reactions, 
uh, and uh, viral illnesses. And if the symptoms are resolving over a period of time within the pregnancy, then the uh, like the diagnosis is not ICD. It is uh, it should be considered otherwise. I mean, it should be now. Okay. So, uh, to the guidelines, the RCG guidelines of 2022, the uh, biolytic levels less than 19 micromoles per liter uh, is considered to be a uh, gestational pruritus. Uh, if um, biolytic levels are from 19 to 39 micromoles per liter, then it is mild ICP. If the levels are from 40 to 99, it is moderate ICP. And if the levels of um, biolytic exceed 100 micromoles per liter, then it is severe ICP. Uh, this should be remembered because uh, we are going to decide uh, on um, the um, uh, further plan, uh, further management according to this these levels. Monitoring of investigations. For women with ICP, consider repeating uh, liver function tests and biolysis after every week. This is according to the uh, latest guidelines. And uh, then determine the frequency on an in, in, individual basis. Definitely, the clinician will decide further whether it is needed every week or not, according to the symptoms. If the if the biolysis are stable and uh, the uh, symptoms are improving, then symptoms are stable and improving or improving, then they should not be repeated every week. Uh, two to three, they should be they can be followed every two to three weeks to guide the therapy and timing of the delivery and the coagulation profile and transaminases levels should also be monitored to measure the progress of the disease if there is any comorbidity or uh, the disease is severe and complicated cases, we should also monitor them. The incidence of preeclampsia was uh, also see, see shown, uh, seen to be higher in pregnant in women with ICP. 12% of the women with ICP had preeclampsia um, compared to 3.4% of the women without ICP. Uh, and so uh, they should, the, the blood pressure monitoring and urinary um, screening, urinary analysis uh, screening for preeclampsia should also be carried out among other uh, investigations while we are uh, treating such patients. <laughs> the incidence of gestational diabetes was also shown higher in the uh, patients, women with ICP. 13.2% of the women with ICP had already been diagnosed with gestational diabetes as compared to 5.9% of women without ICP. But uh, the guidelines, they say that additional uh, testing is not required in ICP patients. <clears throat> Maternal morbidity. Matern um, there is intense itching and the patient is usually, uh, it is difficult for her to sleep and the um, patient is very anxious all the time. And this, this, the, this itching can be so severe sometimes that this can even lead to um, um the patient uh, the patient can go psychotic and also commit suicide and this uh, the so the uh, delivery should be planned accordingly even if the fetus is not mature mature if the patient is not mentally fit then uh, the patient uh, the uh, fetus should be delivered uh, as soon as it can there is increased risk of uh, uh, pih and gdm as i've already told and there is increased risk of pph in such patients because of the decreased uh, vitamin K absorption and prolongation of the prothrombin time. But the fetal risks are, uh, uh, are uh, more important and they should uh, be taken under consideration. Um, the uh, fetal risks may include preterm birth, meconium stained lichen, still birth, which is up to 2 to 11%, and perinatal mor mortality. Uh -oh. The risk of stillbirth, according to the guidelines, uh, this according to the recent studies, in mild ACP, the raised bile uh, acids <clears throat> from 19 to 39 micromoles, it is 0.13%. Uh, in moderate ICP, it is 0.28%. And in severe ICP, it is 3.44%. The risk of uh, stillbirth. Uh, the management. The first thing uh, in the management is that we should counsel the patient very well. The patient uh, is very anxious due to her symptoms and uh, due, and wants to know about the prognosis and also the uh, further um, management plan. So the, we should counsel the patient very well about uh, her condition. The patient with, with the women with ICP they, and uh, singles in pregnancy, 
they should be told that the risk of stillbirth only increases if the serum bilated exceeds 100 micromoles per liter, which is in severe ICU. Uh, they should also be told that uh, they have a higher chance of both spontaneous and hydrogenic preterm birth. They should be also counseled uh, about the increased chance of having meconium stained am amniotic uh, fluid. Um, then um, a meconium stain liquor during labor and birth, and that has to uh, and the delivery should will be planned accordingly. Uh, they, this can even lead to C uh, C section even when she's in labor. Um, and the they should be counseled that the baby they, it's the baby might need uh, the neonatal care uh, as the the baby is also at risk. The fetus is also at risk. Women with the other comorbidities, that is gestational diabetes or preeclampsia or multi-fetal pregnancies, they should also be counseled that there is an increased risk of stillbirth and may influence decision-making and, and the timing of planned um, birth. They should uh, be, it, the uh, twin pregnancy, people with twin pregnancy should also be uh, told that there is a higher uh, chance that, that they, they, the symptoms may might increase because uh, of uh, the ICP and that the stillbirth, the rate of stillbirth is also in, uh, higher in twin pregnancy as there is increased estrogen as well. The women uh, with ICP, uh, should, they, they should be told very, uh, that they should monitor the fetal movement very strictly. And if, if uh, they do not feel movement and uh, they should immediately rush to the clinic nearby and the local maternity unit uh, and tell them about the concerns. Fetal monitoring. Fetal, uh, ultras fetal monitoring can be done by ultrasound and CTG, but they do not predict the stillbirth. Sudden fetal demise might occur within hours of normal CTG because uh, the death, fetal death, they, uh, the mechanism of fetal death is uh, um, not, uh, it is very unpredictable. The bilases crossing the fetal compartment can cause the fetal arrhythmias and uh, decrease in fetal cardiac, uh, con cardiac contractility and the demise can occur immediately. The another another mechanism is that uh, chorionic vein constriction. Uh, if uh, uh, exposed to bilacid, this can result to fetal hypoxia and sudden demise as well. So, the, if all is well go going well and even the CTG is normal, the Doppler is normal. Even still, after hours, uh, the patient can come, uh, come with uh, no fetal movement, and they can be there can be fetal demise. But still, we offer uh, twice weekly CTG and umbilical artery Doppler in, with biophysical profile to such patients for routine um, screening. Um, but uh, in severe cases, daily CTG should be um, offered to the to such patients as well. Treatment for the women, treat, um, topical emollients can be offered. The calamine lotion that was uh, was uh, creams with or without menthol can be offered to reduce the itching. Antihistamine uh, agents uh, such as chlorpheniramine, especially at night, so that can they can also uh, sleep uh, easily because it has some sedative uh, properties. They, this can be offered to the patient. Also, the oxycholic acid. This is also this is the drug of choice in such patients, but this cannot predict the um, uh, the fetal uh, risk to uh, fetal demise because. Uh, and the fetal death can occur even with the treatment of orsodeoxycholic acid. So we cannot assure the patient that if you take this drug, though the, there won't be any fetal demise. The uh, the level the uh, the uh, dose of orsodeoxycholic acid is fifteen milligrams per kg or six hundred to two hundred uh, uh, mg per uh, uh, day uh, in divided doses. This is this is a stellating agent and it decreases the um, two main. Um, uh, uh, bile acids, toricolic toro acid and torodeoxycholic acid, which are increased. And so this might improve the symptoms. The itching may subside and the bile acids, uh, they decrease, so, but they can somehow um, prevent uh, the fetal uh, death, but not uh, very predictive. Um, vitamin K therapy can also be offered if uh, the uh, coagulation profile is disturbed because of the malabsorption of um, uh, vitamin K in such patients and the abnormal prothrombin time. <laughs> Timing of birth is also very important in such cases. Uh, according to the guidelines, planned birth by 40 weeks should be offered 
in, in women with mild ICT, that is levels between 19 to 39. If there are no other risk factors, no uh, the, the pregnancy is singleton and there is no PIH, no GDM, everything is going fine, then they can be taken up to 40 weeks. And uh, the patient can be uh, offered uh, delivery uh, from 38 to 39 weeks of gestation if she has moderate ICP, which is from 40 to 99 micromole per deciliter with no other risks, if there are no other risks. And uh, it, the planned birth should be uh, uh, at 35 to 36 weeks of gestation in, in case of women with severe ICP, uh, and uh, that is taking by illicit more than 100 micromoles per liter. Presence of comorbidities such as gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, and multi-fetal pregnancy, they can increase the risk of stillbirth and they may, may influence the decision-making around and the timing of planned birth. Mode of birth. ICP does not affect the mode of, mode of birth uh, at all. This should be uh, according to the, the clinician should decide according to the routine um, plan. Uh, and uh, they, this, this is not influencing the mode of delivery. Um, and the mode of uh, birth should therefore be uh, based on the obstetric and medical indications other uh, than ICP. If planned early birth is required, then induction can be offered. Uh, if there is no other indication for cesarean section. Monitoring during labor. Continuous fetal heart monitoring, the, the CTG, which is uh, the continuous electronic fetal monitoring should be offered. And uh, the patient, the women should be advised that the presence of the risk factors such as gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, and multi-fetal pregnancy, they increase the risk of adverse perinatal out outcomes and that these conditions themselves may necessitate the monitoring during birth or in conjugation with the ISP may influence in decision making around the monitoring of the label because um, even uh, if everything is going fine and suddenly something goes wrong with the heart, we can we, we should uh, immediately go for a section as we uh, do in other routine uh, pregnancies. Uh, the women should also be uh, told that they can be meconium stained like that, which can also influence the decision making <coughs> of the label. Follow up. Uh, according to the guidelines, the follow-up, uh, the women should be um, with uncomplicated ICP should follow up uh, and they, uh, after four weeks. And if the symptoms and the bilicids, they resolve after four weeks, then it is the diagnosis is confirmed that it was ICP. But if the bilicids and uh, liver function tests are still abnormal, then uh, other liver diseases should be considered and uh, it was not ICP. Counseling for contraception and future pregnancies is very important in such patients. For women with ICP and previous cholestasis, secondary to combined oral um, uh, OCPs, um, are advised not to take them. They should uh, use other uh, methods other than hormonal methods. But if uh, the patient still wants uh, OCP to take OCPs and is not comfortable with the other uh, methods, then uh, low dose estrogen OCPs are now available and they can also be offered to such, to such patients. Or progesterone and progestin only pills are also another uh, form of uh, contraception, which can be offered. Um, the women um, with the history of ICP, they have, um, uh, and the that they should be told that there is a chance of recurrence in subsequent pregnancy and the recurrence rate is 45 to 70%. And uh, if uh, whenever she comes to you again in the uh, subsequent pregnancies, the baseline liver function test and bile acids concentration should be uh, done at the booking visit along with other blood, blood uh, investigations, which is not routinely uh, a part of our baseline investigations. Thank you. Sure. We have quite a number of participants in this. Uh, I'd invite questions if uh, you have uh, before I start my comments. Are there any questions?
आवाज जा रही है हमारी कि नहीं जा रही विटामिन के व्हेन टू स्टार्ट विटामिन के व्हेन देयर इजंट एनी डेफिनेट टाइम बट सिंस अह ये प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ ऑफ इट्स लो लेवल will be at the time of delivery or is there in section so it should be given uh, a couple of days before uh, the planned delivery or is there in section <clears throat> uh, intramuscularly given it's better <clears throat> what dose is on i'll have to check that uh, the exact dose it but uh, Hey, generally, uh, in our practice over here, we we haven't been giving vitamin K neither to the mother nor to the baby. Yes. And so, so I think said that they give uh, vitamin K to the baby at the routine practice. Yeah, well, the because the most of the nurseries they give vitamin K as a that's matter of routine. That's why we we are not really yeah. concerned about that. Now, you see, my comments about uh, this uh, th this is a very good and comprehensive presentation which deals with the. Uh, the incidence of uh, 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 icp uh, some of the mechanisms like uh, the genetic mechanism uh, or genetic basis uh, hormonal influence uh, and how the hormones uh, they they cause uh, icp and also the environment to factors those are, are there and probably those genetic factors are important in this that uh, there are certain populations which are more uh, prone to develop icp for example in south asia india pakistan bangladesh etc in uh, women these uh, coming coming from these regions the uh, the incidence is higher but there are uh, populations in uh, south america in particularly in chile where uh, the uh, uh, incidence is pretty high and uh, Uh, it's up to in certain uh, 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 groups, the incidence is almost twenty, more than twenty-five percent. Uh, uh, that's because of probably the genetic reason, because it then runs in families as well. Uh, मैं एक मिनट अपना जरा देख लू इंसिडेंटली आई आई है टू इयर्स बैक विच मोर लेस मिरर्स आयशा स्लाइड्स एंड आई गो थ्रू दैट प्रेजेंटेशन एंड मेक माई कमेंट्स अबाउट Uh, some of the things that Aisha has already said, because uh, more or less the text is the same in uh, these uh, slides as well. And then, lastly, I will spend about ten minutes over the summary of RCUG guidelines, which actually are the practical thing. Those five six slides will be the practical uh, uh, way of uh, going about it. मैं शेयर करने लगा हूँ स्क्रीन कर सकता हूँ ना मैं जी सर करें पोस्ट डिसेबल किया हुआ पार्टिसिपेंट्स स्क्रीन शेयर मेरी तरफ कर दो स्क्रीन शेयर आप जी सर या स्टीरॉइड इंजेक्शंस दी शुड ऑफर देम सर वो पूछते हैं व्हिच इज रिलायबल मेथड ऑफ फीटल मॉनिटरिंग ये अगर थोड़ा सा इसको आप अगर देख लीजिए मैं वो जो समरी आपको दूंगा ऑफ आरसीयूजी गाइडलाइंस उसमें आपका ये रिलायबल मेथड ऑफ भी अलाउ नहीं हुआ मुझे यहां पर सेंसेस स्क्रीनिंग नहीं करते बाहर तो एनियो सेंसेस भी करते हैं और नहीं सुन लो तो ठीक है बाहर वो करते हैं अभी नहीं आ रही मेरी स्क्रीन जी सर अभी कर स्टीरॉइड कवर कवर का भी पूछते हैं हैं वो देते 37 से पहले अगर डिलीवरी इंडिकेटेड होगी तो फिर आ जाएगी चलो बाकी करने से पहले मैं नहीं मैं जरा स्टडी वो 
पोलिस्टेसिस में डॉपलर स्टडी वो सिर्फ वही यूट्राइन ऑर्ट्री को देखने के लिए है एज फार एज इट इज बायोफिजिकल असेसमेंट ऑफ द फीटस उसके लिए रब करें के नहीं मोस्ट डिसेबल्ड पार्टिसिपेंट्स के लिए ये आपने किया भाई या उधर से इमरान ने किया भाई इमरान मैनेज कर हैं इमरान को कहा आपने जी सर मैंने कह दिया सर किसने उनसे रोक लो मान से अब मेरा हाल है हो सकता है ओके ये आई विल गो थ्रू क्विकली बिकॉज़ इट्स मोस्टली अ रिपीटेशन ऑफ व्हाट आयशा हैज ऑलरेडी सेड यू कैन जस्ट लुक एट दिस आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू वर्बलाइज दिस ओनली वेयर देयर इट इज रिक्वायर्ड approximately 1% in pregnancies in united states but in our uh, population it is more and uh, more seasonal variation is seen also here a bilisid ka jo mechanism hai wo bata diya hai genetic hormonal environmental wo bhi ho gaya aur ye chili ki maine baat batayi thi ki certain populations in chili they experience it uh, the rate is higher aur uh, wohi uh, genetic जो है उसकी है फोकस फैमिली हिस्ट्री पर्सनल ऑफ और फैमिली हिस्ट्री ऑफ आईसीपी गॉल स्टोन पोलिस्टेसिस ऑफ विद ओसीपी ये सारी चीजें आयशा ने बखूबी बयान कर दी हुई है वही बाइल्स पंप वाला और ईस्ट्रोजन लेवल ज्यादा हो जाते हैं मल्टीपल जेस्टेशन ऑब्वियसली एनी कंडीशन विच इज uh caused by pregnancy in multiple pregnancies uh, that that will be uh, there will be higher chance of that ye ho gaya ye bhi ho gaya family clustering ye main bata raha tha na ki chilean population overall has uh, an incidence of 16% and some some groups as much as 28% seasonal variation That is quite high. Ah, that's quite high. Writers without a rash. Oh, these four or five things are there. Differential diagnosis, main diagnosis, or why C B A are there? D S me. Lab tests me. Amma. A L T or A S T. A. Wo dono raised hote hain. Alkaline phosphatase is not really that important because there is. Uh, anyway a background increase because of production of uh, alkaline phosphatase from the placenta wo hota hai bile acid levels monitoring lab test total bile acid coagulation studies uh, but when you look at the summary of uh, recommendations by rcug they will be quite some of them are quite at variance from what is uh, previously uh, what was previously believed so uh, one thing i would like to say that <clears throat> when aisha was uh, telling you and that is the language of uh, rcug guidelines also that advise the women that uh, they are more likely to have stillbirth in such and such condition or this and that that's uh, uh, that's actually for the doctors we need to modify our communication phraseology when we talk to the patient and instead of frightening them or uh, uh, making them too concerned about the, the outcome we should have a pos positive kind of attitude towards the uh, 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 ultimate outcome of this uh, 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 pregnancy affected by icp and therefore our uh, 
wording should be such that it should not uh, uh, paint a kind of negative picture. Uh, and when we tell that uh, there are going, there, there, there can be problems, we can only, we should generally say that, well, it it's, increases the uh, problems, but we will be looking after you, we will be monitoring your pregnancy, we will be carrying out tests, and uh, you are going to be all right. So that kind of positive outlook. Now, of course, the, these are, the fetal outcomes can be devastating. Obviously, if they, it's a stillbirth, it's a devastating outcome. But uh, that is something we, we tone down. Even with modern treatment, risk for fetal demise can range from 2 to 11%. That, that, that is, again, for us to be more vigilant about its monitoring and how we are going to uh, manage the patient. I use, this is important that IUD is associated with intrauterine death with ICP, especially in the total bilacid is elevated or jaundice is present, but it rarely occurs prior to 36 weeks gestation. So before that, uh, after that, uh, after 36 weeks, then our monitoring of the patient would be uh, closer. Fetal uh, complications, preterm delivery, of course, if you have to because of raised levels, then uh, uh, problems and issues associated with freedom delivery would be there and uh, they can be addressed by uh, timely or appropriate uh, dosage of uh, uh, steroid injections for lung maturity. Uh, we uh, here in Pakistan, we don't do uh, amniocentesis so often. I would say that most of us haven't had the experience of doing uh, uh, amniocentesis, although this is considered to be one of the most commonly carried out invasive procedure in pregnancy. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, meconium staining of amniotic fluid would, uh, because that, that can affect the management and how you, uh, and at what time you deliver the baby. So that is something uh, that, that plays some part in that. And by acid concentration with a critical level of 40 micromoles or uh, greater, that is something by at which you may consider uh, amniocentesis. And in another study, total bile acid more than 100 was associated with increased risk of stillbirth. And total bile acid more than 40 was associated with increased risk of meconium stained amniotic fluid. And so far as uh, that um, electronic uh, fetal heart monitoring is concerned, this particular statement, the possibility of sudden fetal death sometimes within hours of normal fetal heart rate tracing, that puts really it into doubt that how frequently are you going to do it? Twice a week? But if it can happen, the fetal death can happen within a few hours after a normal tracing, then uh, uh, even continuous uh, electronic fetal monitoring is not going to uh, uh, be of any use. And secondly, you cannot have a woman admitted in the hospital for four to six weeks for a longer period and continuously uh, having that monitor attached to her. So that's not really practical. So our uh, uh, foundation would be the assessment of bile acids, the level of itching, which is uh, mitigated to a great extent by also uh, medic medicine. Uh, secondly, what we uh, do is that that's the bile acids which are not carried out, uh, estimation of those is not carried out every day. You can do it uh, depending upon the, the sta stage of pregnancy on a weekly basis or perhaps even after three or four days. That's a matter of uh, 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 an opinion depending upon what the level comes out to be. So someone who has a level of 60, let's say, micromoles per liter, in that you may ask them to have it repeated after two or three days. But if the level is 19 and the symptoms are not so intense and the pregnancy is at 35 weeks, then you can have it repeated on, or, or, um, after a week or so. So the uh, result of uh, bilicid uh, uh, test one, the stage of pregnancy and uh, uh, the uh, patient's uh, symptoms so those would dictate how frequently you do uh, those tests and how frequently you monitor the uh, woman.
fetal death rarely occurs before 36 weeks and dimly unknown. In those, it was recommended that delivery should be conducted at 37 weeks at that time. This was 1921. Twice weekly non stress testing is usually recommended. Umbilical artery Doppler results become abnormal prior to abnormal CT. <laughs> so, this is the uh, uh, rationale for uh, carrying out uh, Doppler studies. Uh, there was something I was going to say about this. All right. Well, well, again, it will depend how uh, how much, uh, how, how, what kind of flow you see on that. And till then, current consensus favors twice weekly non-stress test or without doctor testing and induction and test them. Now, you see, there are certain things which you have to do to show uh, for the patient's satisfaction as well. So if you are doing it more frequently or doing it, say, uh, in two or three times a week, you are then emphasizing to the patient and the family, which is again important so that they understand that they are being cared for and uh, you are uh, carrying out all the precautionary measures. So therefore, for the sake of the patient's comfort, for the sake of patient's uh, psychological uh, positivity about this, uh, these tests should be carried out. And uh, the results uh, obviously uh, would be reassuring and you convey it uh, as such to the patients. So that, that's the importance of, more importance of these uh, twice weekly non-stress set. Or having said that sometimes the fetal death can take place uh, in, within a few hours. I personally would not tell the patient this thing beforehand. So you see, if, they are, if it is going to be two persons, still birth rate, 98 patients would unnecessarily worry about all that, that the fetal death can take place anytime after a reassuring uh, uh, CTG. So therefore, I'll keep that until, uh, if God forbid, something happens, then I can explain to them that this is something and we can uh, uh, do anything about uh, in, in terms of preventing that. Antenatal testing, of course, we have already said that. Now, this is about various uh, studies. The authors noted a significant reduction in stillbirth rate with this intensive surveillance strategy. Inpatient admission, continuous fetal heart monitoring, delivery between 36 and 37 weeks. A drug complications, follow up, subsidy. Now I'll uh, take you through just five slides of uh, uh, these green top guidelines, uh, the recommendations of which are a, a little variance from the, uh, the presentation that you've seen. Number one, the diagnosis of intrahepatic polystasis of pregnancy should be considered in pregnant women who have itching and skin of normal appearance. There is no eruption as such. The skin is normal, of course, in some women, because of having uh, uh, scratched uh, to relieve that itching, there may be uh, uh, signs of scratching. Uh, but otherwise, there wouldn't be any eruption. Raised, weak, random, random total bilicid, not necessarily fasting level, concentration of 19 micromole per liter or more. If that level is there, then you make a diagnosis of intrahepatic polystasis. Additional lab tests are not recommended until it is associated with atypical clinical symptoms, presence of relevant comorbidities like uh, preeclampsia or diabetes, or in early onset severe ICP, because usually it uh, occurs mostly in third trimester, sometimes in second trimester also, but rarely in first trimester. So if it is early onset, then you will test for other liver uh, dysfunctions as well. Consider additional postnatal investigation in women who, uh, who in whom resolution of abnormal liver function test is delayed or does not occur. So uh, liver function uh, estimation or tests should be carried out in those. Consider discussing the care of women with severe, very early or atypical presentation with a hepatologist. So uh, that's also uh, one of the recommendations that uh, 
one should uh, uh, seek the advice of a hepatologist and confirm the diagnosis of ICP in the postnatal period at least four weeks after birth with resolution of itching and liver function tests returning to normal. Advise women with isolated ICP and singleton pregnancy that now, this is the statement which needs to be rephrased when we are talking to the woman. Uh, risk of stillbirth only increases above population rate once they have serum pilicid concentration. So this is a very reassuring system because the there is a background stillbirth risk which is there, which is about 0.2%. That is there. But in ICP, that risk would increase uh, from the background uh, risk of having a stillbirth only if the bilicid concentration is 100 microgram per liter. This is important. So you refer to uh, RCOG guidelines uh, of 2022 when you talk about the bilicid concentration and uh, the possibility of stillbirth. Now, this is uh, these three uh, are uh, the indications and timing of delivery. In women with peak bilicids 19 to 39 micromoles and no other risk factors like heart, preeclampsia or diabetes, the risk of stillbirth is similar to the background risk, so no enhanced risk, and consider options of planned birth by 40 weeks gestation or ongoing antenatal care according to national guidance. So if they say that you don't, in Pakistan, we must deliver by uh, 40th week. If the levels remain below 39, as a matter of fact, I would be more comfortable delivering at 39 weeks. In women with the, the peak bile acid between 40 and 99, now this is pretty high. The known risk of stillbirth is similar to the background risk until 38, 39 weeks. So you deliver at 38 weeks. Consider planned birth at 38, 39 weeks. So this, this gives clear guidelines about uh, the levels of uh, bile acids and at what time should you deliver. So if it is below 39, deliver by 40 weeks. If uh, between uh, 40 and 99, deliver at 38 weeks. And in women with peak acid at uh, bile acid at 100 micromoles, the risk of stillbirth is higher and therefore consider planned birth at 35 to 36 weeks gestation. And so this is the timing of delivery for uh, these levels. Now, I, I, I'll rephrase this. Advise women with ICP with twin pregnancy stillbirth as a. Now, we'll uh, say that we'll keep in mind that in twin pregnancy, risk of stillbirth is higher compared with a ten, twin pregnancy without ICP. And therefore, we will be more careful. Instead of telling, advising the woman, we will be careful. Now, this is the language of the recommendation. That's why I've kept it just like that. Clinicians should be aware that fetal ultrasound and or cardiotopography do not predict or prevent stillbirth in IC. This is important. Although we are doing those uh, uh, tests, but they are done for our own comfort as well as for the patient's reassurance. And we will follow the guidelines of delivery depending upon biolacid levels. This is to simplify the whole thing. Women with ICP that in presence of comorbidities uh, appear to increase the risk of stillbirth and may influence the scene making around timing of planned birth. Again, here, when we look at the bile acid levels, we are also saying that there are no other risk factors. If there are other risk factors, then we will not wait till 40 weeks, then we will intervene earlier. Right? And similarly, at, at all levels of bile acids, we do take into consideration whether any other comor comorbidities are present or not. And uh, then uh, there are no treatments that improve pregnancy outcome or raise bile acid concentrations. This should be remembered. And treatment to improve maternal itching are of limited benefit. Now, this is something that we, for our own, for doctor's own protection, th this is the kind of thing that we need to uh, give that, that information to the patient to the family that this is a condition we'll uh, look after the pregnancy in a more uh, vigilant manner more by more frequent examinations by uh, more frequent tests which are uh, relevant to this condition and uh, we will find the uh, uh, 
delivery according to the outcome of those uh, test results. But still, there is no treatment which will uh, improve the outcome as such. So far as uh, 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 baby's well-being is concerned or reversal of the process, and then that will continue to go on. That needs to be emphasized. And then do not routinely offer also the oxycholic acid for the purpose of reducing adverse perinatal outcome. This is only given for it's relieving it's itching. Yeah. It does not uh, improve the uh, outcome of the... So for outcome, we would stick with this. Right? So this is something which I wanted to uh, clarify. Number one, uh, the, just follow these five slides of... Uh, summary of uh, our COG guidelines, one. Number two, our, uh, our choice of words and the way we communicate with the patients, uh, that has to be uh, uh, modified according to our social and our cultural uh, environment and not necessarily in the same language as one would do it in UK, right? So we, we modify our phraseology according to that while conveying the same sense of that. And uh, I personally find this particular uh, component of the uh, guidelines important in so far as uh, deciding about the time of delivery. And uh, then we, of course, have the backing of uh, the, the this uh, particular document, which obviously has had the benefit of uh, uh, a lot of research. So this is, in summary, the five slides. I think that they should guide our planet. Yes. Doctor, if there is discrepancy on uh, growth scan. Now, you see, if there is uh, some uh, issues of growth, etc., then, of course, uh, like uh, uh, we are considering other comorbidities like diabetes or hypertension, then we take into consideration those factors as well. And the IUGR in uh, its own right might uh, uh, require an earlier uh, delivery. Vitamin K ka zara mujhe bhi pata karke batana because main usko nahi deta but oral ya injectable kaisa hai, it should be only one click away for you. But <laughs> 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.